Hey guys, Fuzzy Knob here. Uh, welcome to part 5 of this uh, exploitation tutorial. Um, in this part we are actually going get, to uh, get to finally exploiting this program that I've taken 5 videos to uh, get around to. Um, at this point, if you're, if you're following along and you, and you haven't yet, I recommend for you to go to uh, pentest.cryptocity.net That's p-e-n-t-e-s-t dot cryptocity dot net Okay, and if you go to this website, you'll see a section called Exploitation. This is a uh, pretty awesome class taught by Dino Daisovi. And uh, if you go and watch the videos, maybe uh, read some of the articles they reference here, uh, it's a really great source. This is going to give you some of the um, history and roundabout uh, memory corruption stuff. Um, it's going to include a buffer overflow. It's going to take you uh, past where I have been in this tutorial series. But that's fine. Like I said, you're going to need to see it more than once. So um, please go ahead and go and watch this video. Um, now for uh, my tutorial. Now, back to the program. I've recompiled it uh, without that exit zero uh, line of code. And we're going to pull it up in GDB again. And uh, we're going to play out a slightly different scenario. Because right now it's pretty obvious exactly where and why this program crashes. However, uh, if we're running this program and we, um, we know that it crashes, but we don't know exactly where our EIP overwrite is. Um, and this is, uh, this is often a problem uh, if you're you know, crashing some program that's a little more complicated than this one. Um, so, for instance, if we had sent uh, to this program, uh, I don't know, like 128 A's, and set of 32. Like the first time we send 128 and it crashes and we don't have the source code, we don't know how big the buffer is um, and we want to find out uh, exactly uh, what address overwrites EIP um, so that we can take control of EIP. Okay, so let's just, uh, let's just explore this here. So we have 128 A's that we are sending to this program it crashes, right? We sent a bunch of A's, it crashes, it crashed with uh, 41414141, right? So we know that four of the A's that we've sent overwrote EIP somewhere, but we're not sure which four. It could be, you know, these four, it could be these four over here. Um, we have no way of telling right now. So the easiest and simplest method uh, from where we are right now is to do a binary search. Now, there are other methods, and I will get to those later, but for now, let's just pretend we want to do a binary search. So, what we can do is we can take our A's that we've sent, and I used 128 for a reason because it's easy to uh, divide, but we can send um, 64 A's and 64 B's. So, now what we're going to find out is, is it in the first half of the A's that we've sent, or is it in the second half? So, we've sent 64 A's. 64 B's. We see again that it overwrites with 41, which is, you know, A. Now, we know that the overwrite is in the first half. We can do this process again. We can, uh, we can say, okay, we know that we overwrote with this first half of 64 A's. So let's try 32 A's and 32 C's. This time we've seen that it overwrites with uh, with A's again. So it's not here in the 64 B's, it's not here in the 32 C's, it's somewhere here in these 32 A's. So we can split this again. We can write with uh, 16 A's and then let's say 16 D's. So we write 16 D's or we write 16 A's, 16 D's. Now when we run this again, we're either going to see A or we're going to see D. And I've done something wrong. Dot, dot, here we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so here we've seen that it's in the 16 Ds, because instead of 414141, we see 444444, which you can guess that that is D, 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 D. So we just continue the process. 
we don't care about these 16 A's anymore, but we want to divide these 16 D's into 8 D's and 8 E's. As you can see, this is getting tedious already. So we see that it's, uh, it's 4 or 5 now, so we know it's in these 8 E's. Luckily, we only have to do this one more time to find out exactly where it is. So we're going to send 4 E's and 4 F's. And we get 4 6, which, as you may have guessed, is the F's. So now we know that right here with these 4 F's is where exactly where we overwrite EIP. So uh, I know this video is getting long enough. So if we want to take EIP and send it somewhere, we need to put that memory address right here. So that's one technique. Um, this video is long enough. That's all for this video. If, uh, if you like the series, please subscribe. Uh, thanks, guys. Bye.